guys, that's my best friend Chanel. And that's my best friend Janelle. And this week we're doing a video about interacting with police. Mm. Um, so we did a video on the when they docu see series us. When They See Us, um, The Exonerated Five. And I think that we just needed to go a little further and have this conversation with you guys about um, police interactions, what to do. Um, when you come in contact with the police, um, especially as um, somebody from the black community. Um, and also just talking a little bit about the police interactions that we have had ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any? Yeah, I've had some. Have you? Um, not directly, but indirectly. Like what? Um, I'm a wife of a black husband. So, you know, his his interactions with it and how it indirectly and directly affects the wife and the family. Um, so you've been like up close and personal to see like how they interact with him and how they treat him? Yes. And my husband, of course, like any black man, you, you are taught to comply. So there's that and feeling less than if that makes sense just the way in which they look at you the way they talk to you and um i don't i mean we all i would very humbly like to say that i feel like between my husband and i we are of standing citizens um we both work for the government we both um do greatness in our community so not saying that we're higher than anything or anybody but or that you don't make mistakes. Or that we, exactly, or that we don't make mistakes. But once they're in your face and they are talking with you and they're interacting with you and the way they look at you. But actually, now that I think about it, I have definitely, like I said, I share with you, I work for a well-known government company worldwide here where I am. And um, we wear badges that says the company's name all over it. This was after work one day. I took my badge off and I put it on my windshield, of the, the rear view mirror, you know, have it hung, hanging up so that I could, you know, easy place to remember. And I had, they had set a speed trap. Now, if it's one thing I do do, I may stay with it. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm going to keep it real. I will kind of, it's not good, but I have been in the past caught speeding those Tickets, those fines definitely have taught me a lesson. I mean, who hasn't? Exactly. So I try to, you know, do right now in my mature years. But um, when the police officer had pulled me over and he was like, man, do you know how much you're going X, Y, Z? And, you know, all stern like this. And I was like, officer, I really had to use the restroom. And then he looked up in my rear view mirror and he saw my lanyard that had my company's name all over it. And he was like, oh. You work for this company? Oh, all right, hold on. He went back to his car, came back, and he was like, I'm gonna give you a warning, make sure that you don't speed again, and X, Y, Z. So I took that as, you need to wear your lanyard all the time. And I actually have used it, and I do see where the police give me bias for working at this very prestigious government facility. So there's that aspect. Then there's also, where my husband, at when he um, first started working, he was working at Sort of K. What is that for people who don't know? Sort of K. Oh, there. Circle K is a gas station. Um, yeah, a quick store, right? A corner store, if you want to call it that. And he worked the night shift. They offer coffee, free coffee to on on duty police officers to keep them awake. Um, and of course my husband is a very amazing guy, very friendly person. And he began to form relationships with these police officers that would come into the night shift. And this one police officer looked at my husband and said, is there anybody bothering you? You let me know because if not, if you have somebody, I got some cocaine that I could plant on in their car and let them get arrested and put them away. And my husband came back home and was, I mean, at the time he was like, oh no, to the police officer. When he came and he told me, we both were like, this is what they do. They literally just nonchalantly 
very openly. I mean, I knew. Like, that was never something that I didn't know um, and that I didn't doubt and um, that I haven't seen. Um, but I just never, ever, ever would have imagined that they would just be so out there with you. Yes. Like, you know that you're yes. doing something corrupt, that you're yes. doing something wrong, that you're doing something you know, that you should be get locked up for. Yes. And you're just nonchalantly offering services. <laughs> if you got somebody, because you're, you're, I like you, you let me know if anyone's bothering you, and I'll put this, I'll find your car, and I will, you know. I was like, wow. And I give, I applaud my husband for definitely taking a higher route and knowing that that is beneath us. And it should be beneath the people who we look towards to protect and to enforce the law around our areas. Yeah, I don't play that. I don't play that at all. And it's gotten even worse after I came out of law school. Mm -hmm. um, I don't play them games. Like the first thing I would have been looking at is for a badge number and a name because you were definitely getting reported. Like I don't play that stuff. But um, you take one out, there's still so many. Okay, but one is enough. Like, we could keep it going. If you want to come and tell me what you do that's corrupt and illegal, like, we can, we can make this a chain reaction. Um, That's boldness. That's beyond, that's, like, I don't even, I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now. Like, how dare you? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I, I don't know what, what would possess somebody to actually brag about something like yeah. that or boast about something like that. You are literally ruining someone's life. Yeah. And they're okay with it. And then you want to get upset and be like, you know, blue lives matter and police lives matter. And, you know, it's everyone's up in arms if a police officer gets arrested because they know that they're going to get attacked if they go to jail or in prison. I wonder why. I wonder why when half the population in there, I mean, I'm being a little bit dramatic in half. I really don't know the numbers, I, you know, but when you've put away these people for not doing anything. I wonder why. You or somebody you did know or somebody who they knew or somebody you watched do some shady stuff that you never stopped and you never said no to. Yeah. You know, my interactions with police, um, the first time I ever had an interaction with police um, up close and personal, because I saw it, um, you know, through friends and through family and through people that I knew, but I was never involved in it until... Um, this one time when I was in high school, um, I had a couple friends over and it was around nine o'clock when I was just like, all right, you know, time to go X, Y, Z. So they called their ride and they were, we're all in high school. Um, they weren't driving yet or, I mean, honestly, if I'm, if we're being honest, they couldn't even afford cars if they wanted to. Um, they were a couple years older than me. Um, I think one was 17 and one was 18. Um, and I think I was 16 at the time and they were in... Um, my area, which, I mean, I never grew up in, like, uh, an impoverished area or, um, as, you know, others would term it, the hood. I, like, that, I, I didn't have interaction with that until I was an adult, until I turned 18. They came from those impoverished areas. And so they were visiting me in, you know, in my area. And we went outside to wait for their ride to come they had called their ride and you know we're just hanging out in my driveway i'm sitting on top of one of the trunks of my cars and uh, i say my car is like if i own cars but <laughs> the cars that belong to my household um and they were just kind of hanging out as well in my driveway we're all just talking laughing you know having a good time like i said we're in high school we're just you know hanging vibing right and you oh. know waiting for their ride to come um, one of them picks up the phone, his cell phone at the time, I think it was like a Nokia block phone at that point. And he picks up the phone and he's calling his ride, like, yo, where you at? This and that. And the person, I guess, is like, yo, I'm on this street and this and that. And he, so he's trying to give him directions. And he walks to the corner. Um, my house is like four houses from, um, from the corner, from the stop sign. So he walks to the corner to see like, oh, do I see the car? Like, you know, are you anywhere where I can direct you? And somebody some great Samaritan, who I think is a piece of something that shall not be named, um, decides to call the police and say that there's somebody on the corner selling drugs. We were none the wiser. We didn't know. So all of a sudden, you know, he had already walked back to my driveway and, you know, we're just chilling there waiting um, until the person, you know, calls again. Um, and police just 
like storm up on us. <laughs> like he, you know, ripped around the corner and comes, you know, by my, not in my driveway, but like the street blocking the driveway basically. And he, you know, steps out the car. His lights aren't even on at this point. So we don't even know what this is about. I'm thinking like, is this one of my neighbors? Like, cause we do have a couple cops in, in the neighborhood. And he just like comes out the car and he's just like, um, I'm going to need you two to get down on the ground. And I'm looking at him like, the hell? And, you know, I'm asking questions at this point. Like, what's going on? Like, what did they do? What, you know, what happened? This and that. And he just will not answer me. He's just like, get down on the ground, this and that. You go inside before I tell your um, your parents, before I knock on your door, before I arrest you too, this and that. And I'm looking at him like, I mean, you have to understand, like, I'm 16. I don't know any better. And I'm thinking, all I'm thinking is, like, my mom is inside. My mom is a, you know, a Caribbean woman. Like, I like, oh, what is? <laughs> I don't know, you know, that I didn't do anything wrong. I don't know that, you know, like, what they're saying is not a possibility. I'm thinking, like, oh, crap, they can arrest me. Um, meanwhile, like, what are you going to arrest me for? But, again, I'm 16. Like, I don't know anybody. That's not where I'm thinking. The cop is saying, like, he's going to arrest me, too. So, I run inside and I'm looking through the, you know, the window at what's going on and they're just completely treating them like crap. Um, I mean, screaming at the two of them, like if, you know, I I don't know, screaming is going out of style. (laughs) Like, um, I just kept hearing them, get down, down, don't move, don't move, this and that. And, you know, he has one of them on the ground, like one is face down on the ground and he's not moving. And I just feel like, they weren't doing, they were just kind of going along with it because this was their, this is their life. This is something that they deal with on a regular basis. This is something that, you know, especially living in these impoverished areas, police do this, these things, kinds of things all the time. Frequently. They will stop people for no reason just because they're walking and say, oh, you, you know, your description fits the description. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you, you come to find out that this description had nothing to do with them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, it happens all the time. And I've seen that for myself as well. So, you know, one is down, you know, face down on the ground. Nobody's saying anything. Well, these two aren't saying anything. Um, He has the other one, you know, on his knees with his hands behind his back and he's searching him. Okay, stand up now. Get against the, um, the car. This and that. And he's just going off. Like, these are, I mean, for the most part, children. Like, one, I think, like I said, was 18, but one was 17. And the way that he was speaking to them, the way that he was addressing them, the way that his demeanor was, like... He's not, he wasn't treating them like people. He wasn't treating them like human beings whatsoever. He never asked any questions. You know, he searched them up and down to realize that they didn't have anything on them except cell phones and keys and wallets. Eventually, when I realized, like, you know, he told them to both get up and, you know, things were coming to a head, like, you know, finishing off, I went back outside and I was like, what is this about? Like, what's going on? And he comes out and tells us, you know, somebody called the cops and said that, you know, there was somebody on the corner selling drugs. Um, on his cell phone. So, you know, I looked at that, that officer and I kind of was just like, okay, well, we're not doing anything wrong. Obviously, like you search them, there's nothing there. Like, you know, we're just hanging out. He turned to my friends and told them, you two don't belong here. You guys need to leave. I can't tell you how much that hurt me. (laughs) And it was something that like has always stuck with me. And had I known better and had I not been a child and I mean, first of all, I don't, I feel like that police officer just completely disregarded that we were children to begin with. Like he knew I was a child. It was very obvious. I've always looked young for my age. And instead of, you know, ringing on the doorbell and saying like, Hey, this is the situation. Like as a parent, um, he just went straight for these boys. And even upon realizing that they, you know, one at least was 17, like he didn't stop. He didn't treat them any of any differently. He didn't treat them like they were human beings whatsoever. And then, you know, when I finally came to terms with like, oh, you know, you, you don't belong here and, re- and figured out later on, like, had I known better and had I been informed, like my first reaction to this officer was going to be like, you don't dare tell me who belongs at my house because these are my guests at my house. Like, who are you to tell my friends and to tell me that they don't belong at my house? Who are you to tell anyone that you don't belong anywhere, period? Period. I was very, very hurt by that situation. Um, and I forever look back at it like I I, I wish reason? I had known better. 
Um, that's not the first interaction. I mean, that's not the last interaction that I've had with a police officer. Um, I've had a couple more interactions. I've had one where I literally chased an officer down in Costco to get his badge number to report him because I've just gotten to a point where like, there is no officer out there who's going to talk to me anyway, who's going to treat me anyway. Um, I'm not a criminal. I've never done, you know, some something that an officer was attacking me for. When I say attacking me, like treating me in a bad way. Um, you know, I had an officer tell me that he was going to arrest me because I was, I was waiting to park. And I had my indicator on, indicating that I was waiting for this person that was, you know, backing out. They weren't backing out yet. They had just finished loading up, you know, their groceries. And so I have my indicator on. I'm on the right side, you know, so that I can turn in. Um, it's very easy for somebody to go around me because the car is, is there and I'm waiting. Um, there's space for anyone to go around me. I made sure of that. And I even moved over a little bit more to the right um, when he started complaining. And he probably gets out of his car and starts, like, barking at me, like, what are you doing? And starts like screaming at me. And I'm looking at him like, I was in shock, honestly. Like I was looking at him like, uh, you can't possibly be talking to me right now. Like, what did I do? And I literally asked him like, what did I do wrong? I'm telling you to move. You don't see me. I'm telling you to move. And I'm like, I'm waiting for a park. Like, what do you mean you're telling? Like, I'm not blocking anything. Like you, I didn't tell him he can go around. Like I wasn't rude or anything, but I literally was just sitting there looking at him like, you can't be serious right now. And he said, do you understand me? This and that. And I, listen, honey, <laughs> I am not one to speak to in any way like that. I, I don't take crap at all. Like, that's not, I don't, that's not me. So, you know, I go into the park eventually. I didn't move. I mean, he got in his car and was, you know, still pissed off and fuming. And he went around me like he could have done the entire time. Um, and then I turn into the park. And best believe, I ran all over Costco looking for this man because he had went into Costco. Um, he parked his, his police car outside of Costco in the front of the, of the like, in the fire lane. You should take pictures. And, you know, went into Costco. And I'm sitting here like, I don't even understand what just happened. Like, and so I went after him and I, you know, I looked at his badge and I realized afterwards that I actually took down the wrong number. Um, I think one was like a precinct number and one was a bad, I, I don't remember. But anyway, so I had to, like, after I walked off, I went back to him and I stood up right in front of him. Like, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the officer and I'm looking like this. Like, I give no, I give no craps. <laughs> I don't care. You're not going to treat people the way that you want to treat them because your job is to serve and protect. No more, no less. No more, no less. You have absolutely no right and no authority to treat people in a condescending manner, demean people, treat people like subhumans. For absolutely no reason. I don't put up with that. As of right now, with the education that I have and the, the level of knowledge that I have of my rights and the things that should go on and shouldn't go on, I wish I had it when I was younger because that officer it would have been me and his ass. Anyway, it eventually came to a head and, and after I got his badge number, he came back to me and was just like, um, you know, what what's what's the problem? Why are you asking for my badge number, this and that? And I was just like, because what just happened needs to never happen again. And I will report you. And he kind of calmed down when he realized, you know, I'm, I'm dead ass serious. And he's just like, you know, I apologize. But you have to understand that um, police officers, sometimes we just act this way because we're so used to people being aggressive with us. And I said to him, was I being aggressive with you? Did I come off in any way as aggressive or like I was doing something wrong? And he, you know, he calmed down and he was just like, no, but, you know, it's just what we're used to and this and that. And I'm like, okay, but it's not, okay. it's not, no, it's, it's not. And that, that's the entire point. Like you can't just come at people as if they're going to attack you from the jump. Like, and that, and that should be part of police training. Like you don't interact with the public as if, you know, they're ready to kill you. Like I'm somebody who is looking for a park to go shopping in Costco. Like, are, is your brain okay? Like, are, are, is your brain defective? Seriously. Like, yes. And so, you know, I, I just, I, these are just two examples of things that I've been through in interactions with police. I've seen the most. Um, and I'm telling you this from, you know, a perspective where I have been an attorney in a government um, office. I have, you know, been in impoverished areas. I've had friends who lived in impoverished areas. I've seen the things that happen and the way that police interact with, um, you know, people from these areas.
they don't look at us as human. They don't. I, I've seen it, you know, time and time again. And I feel like, you know, it's it's not nice and it's not great to lump people in and to use that stigma of like them as police officers. But honestly, I just feel like if there are so many of them and not enough people pointing them out and saying you're doing this wrong, you shouldn't be doing this and making a change and trying to change their coworkers and the people that they work with who are doing these things, you're just as guilty, you're complicit, and that makes you one of them. Mm. My, my personal interactions with police have always been pleasant. Um, they always let me off, thank you Lord. <laughs> but um, uh, my husband, they he has a different a different understanding a different walk with them he used to live in a very impoverished area when we first met and we didn't have a vehicle so he had to walk everywhere and there are many times where he would just get pulled over and searched just because like janelle said you know the description and there was no description or even if they're yeah even if if it's not fit yeah. the description because yeah. they feel like you, people you're don't suspicious know, and people don't know their rights yeah so they just stop anybody yeah. just because and so it got to the point where it was every like almost every day you know he's just like you pull me over every day walking i'm going to work i have on my chef outfit like where am i doing in this wrong to the point where it then you know, every time that he would get pulled over, his hands would go up immediately. Why are you putting your hands up? Are you guilty? He was like, no, I feel threatened. I want you to see my hands, that I'm, I'm not reaching for anything. And, you know, my husband tends to, he can dramatize things. And in this situation, I understand why he did it and why, why it was like a wake-up call to them. I don't think that's dramatic at all. It's not, but... Now, you have to understand, me, who've never really seen these type of interactions before. And I think that's it, the entire problem, is that people like you, who don't see these things regularly, and who don't see these things happen to people that they know, and who, don't, who, who aren't involved in these kinds of communities and these kinds of situations, just think they're being dramatic. Very true. That doesn't, that doesn't and happen. Then we, and then afterwards, when we did sit down and discuss it, I, I commended him for it because I understand. You know what I'm saying? I mean, him just doing that, saved his life it could have been a mike brown situation it could have been a a, a philandro castillo it could have been one of those situations and i understand why he did it now let's fast forward to where we are today where he feels like certain things may happen not necessarily with the police but even with people in general and i'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this um caucasian people in general especially in our area um, I have never ever been called the n-word before until I moved to this very rural city that I live in and Just driving past somebody they didn't like me. They're like you damn. I was like, whoa, whoa Like I've never been called that before. So now we're We're driving and someone is in the wrong. They're in the wrong. They cut them off They are doing just foolish on, on, on the car and he feels like I need to address this. Now, me as a wife, a scared wife, a black woman who doesn't want to see her husband go, I tell him, honey, don't do that. Don't go over there. And he's, you know, we get, begin to argue because he's like, you're trying to make me into a coward. I'm not a coward. I, I will respond to people when they do wrong. And he has all right to. But as a fair, for myself, for my husband, that I don't want to see him become a Mike Brown. I don't want to see him become a Phil, a, a, a Mr. Castillo. You know, I don't Castillo. Castillo. I don't want to see him become any of these stories. You know, Trayvon Martin, just a man sitting here doing their own thing, and they are subjected to death because it's easy to kill them off. There's too many of them. I've heard those statements before. I've I've read them. I've watched people say it out their own mouth. So now me as a black wife trying to uplift my husband and tell him to do right and not necessarily take the take the lower route. Just humble yourself, talk, you know? And he is right, like General was saying, we don't have to do this. We don't have to necessarily take all the crap that's coming our way. We have rights. 
And we want you guys to go out there and learn your rights. We want you guys to go out there and start to walk in your rights. We got to know. We got to wake up. We do. Um, as far as police interactions go, I just feel like the, the main um, advice that I think we can give you guys is, you know, obviously, compliance has become this huge ordeal and this huge argument um, that I think is very biased, in my opinion. I think that people who have never experienced these situations will sit in their houses and watch these stories on the news and say, he should have complied, she should have complied. But... Um, if you've never been through it, I, I feel like you can't talk. Um, I feel like if you've never been through a situation where you are shaking in terror because somebody has a gun to you or, you know, somebody is threatening to arrest you for something that you didn't do or you don't feel like you're guilty of, um, it can be difficult to comply, to just say, okay, here, get, you know, I take it, take my body, like take whatever you need. It doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong. Like, I, I mean, I know I wasn't raised like that. I, as a black woman, thankfully have never been in a situation where that has arisen because I feel like if, if it did and if I ever were put into a situation like that, I couldn't comply and I probably would end up dead. Um, I wasn't raised to just go along with the flow. If you're accusing me of something that I didn't do, I will stand up for myself. I was raised that way. So, you know, to hear people say like, oh, well, he should have complied, she should have complied, and that's the reason that they lost their life. Like, I want you to understand that... Um, Resisting arrest and not complying is a crime. It's not a death sentence. I, I don't understand why people equate the two. So, yeah, as a black woman understanding the black community and the black men that deal with these officers on a regular basis, I have to say, in good conscience, comply. I don't know if I could. <laughs> I don't know if I would. But that would be one of my best advice to you is to comply. Number two, don't ever speak to the police. Don't ever talk to them. I wouldn't answer questions, even if I'm not under arrest. Um, you know, the minute that they speak to you, it's like they feel like you need to give them information. I mean, at the very minimum, a name and a driver's license or an ID of some sort should let them know this is who you are. Um, but apart from that, I really wouldn't have anything to say. Um, anything that you say is, is something that they're going to write down in their little report and they're going to send off to the state attorney and the state attorney is going to bury you with it. Um, they're not your friends. I don't care if you're trying to be helpful and if you're giving, look at that video that came out the other day of, um, this woman who was calling the cops on a neighbor of hers who pulled a gun on her and who ended up in handcuffs and being, you know, tackled on the ground was the woman that called the police. <coughs> police are not your friends. I don't care if you think you're being helpful. I don't talk to police. I do not speak to them. I do not address them. I don't ask for help in any situations. And I mean, I've had situations where police come to my house to try to help. And, you know, I shouldn't even say to try to help. I shouldn't say to try to help. Um, you know, I had a family member who, who decided like, okay, I've had enough. I'm calling the police and, you know, seeing if we can get like a report drawn up, whatever the case. And they came out and they said, oh, we can't do anything. I've been to law school. I know you can do something. I know that there are options. I know that you can write this person a citation. I know that there are options, but you're lazy and you don't want to do your job. Hmm. Um, oh, oh, oh. Speaking of that, when you just said that, that brought me back to another thing. We're at the children, this happened the other day in the kids' graduation. You know how at school they always have an on site police officer? Well, this on site police officer was talking with another law enforcement that was there. And he was like, man, uh, I don't want to have to go over there and and do anything. I just want to sit there and watch people so I can give them a cricket and ticket tickets. Because that's what, like, it's easy. Literally, out of his mouth. We're walking past and my husband and I are like this. So, comply. Um, don't talk. Sorry? Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk at all. Always have an attorney. Always ask, am I being arrested? If you're not being arrested, leave leave because if you're not being arrested there's no reason for you to be sitting there having a, a, a conversation or having any any type of interaction none whatsoever because you're you cannot be forced to speak um and the third one that i would say is you know again i hate to have to say this but no sudden movements we've already seen how horribly that can go um you know we've we've even seen how horribly it can go when you actually tell police that i am complying and doing exactly what you want me to do and they still shoot you 
but you know those are the best <laughs> advice that we can give to people who end up in these situations and to people who aren't in these situations and have never been in these situations and have never seen these situations play out um i said it in another video about um when they see us the docuseries the exonerated five i really feel like until you're ready to get in there and actually volunteer and see these things happen on a regular basis go to prisons and you know be there with the youth be there with the juvenile detention centers and you know actually get to know people in these situations and hear their stories i don't really feel like you can have a say on any of these things um i don't really feel like you fully comprehend and understand and i don't really feel like you want to fully comprehend and understand until you get into these situations and try to so that would be my advice all the way around for people in these situations and out of them. Most importantly, uh, above all things, get understanding, get knowledge. Like Janelle said, if she would have known what she knew in her tender years, that police officer would have never been able to get away with what he got away with. So again, we just got to get understanding, share the knowledge, share the understanding let's get involved with lawyers and, and and see you know as a community like this is right this is wrong this is what they can't do this is what they shall not do and this is what we have the right to do of course self-preservation comes first yes um i would never tell you to do something that you you know you feel like could end up getting you killed um and in this day and age we've seen it all yeah so thank goodness for the uh camera ages because with that we're now able to get uh recording yeah of what's going um, on and you know of course you have the cops with the body cams who don't always turn them on and, and who turn them off when they feel like it so um i definitely feel like that needs to be addressed of course this these this, these are all new things that have come out you know within the past couple of years but i feel like people who address this situation with body cameras should also address the situation where people are turning them off and not using them. Exactly. Um, I feel like even just touching your body camera should be like some kind of being written up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, who am I? And check it daily. You know, how many times was your camera off? Why was it off? What are you doing? No, there isn't. Why was it off? It shouldn't come off. It shouldn't come off at all. That's what I'm saying. If you're on duty, your camera should be on, period. You should not touch it. You shouldn't even have the ability to turn it off. You are on duty. So is your camera. Anyway, um, that wraps up that discussion. We felt like this was very much needed, especially after seeing that docuseries and especially after all the conversation that's been going on in society right now. Um, we felt like we needed to address these things. Most well, certainly. So that's that for this video. Come back next week. So you can see your beautiful faces. Like your faces. And intelligent minds. Yes. <laughs> um, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let us know if you have any of these situations that have ever happened. We actually really want to hear. We're yeah, very interested seriously. in this. Um, you know, we've had our own situations, but um, I really like to hear stories like this just because I feel like getting stories like this out is another way to yeah. facilitate conversation yeah. that needs to be heard. Um, and hit the bell. And that's my best friend, Chanel. And that's our best friend, Intelligent Chanel. I got it. I want it. 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 I got 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 it. I want their interviews on my desk immediately so I can put together a timeline. Let's work. Don't answer no damn questions, even if it don't have nothing to do with you. Like, Good I didn't see nothing out. No nothing. Nobody has said anything about them being, like, arrested right. or detained or anything. So, like, Where's I don't even understand why anybody's staying. But, of course, nobody knows better. Nobody knows Where did better. you see the lady? You gonna charge me? Charge me. What, what you gonna arrest me? Arrest me. When the police want what they want, they will do anything. Do you hear me? Anything. They will lie on us. They will lock us up. They will kill us. I ain't gonna let them kill my son. <laughs>